Good morning, everyone. It is well known that today tourism is the largest and most important industry in the world, employing just over 450 million people, representing some 11% of global employment, and generating 8.8 .8 trillion US dollars of expenditure, which is about 10.9% of global GDP. The impact of uh, the coronavirus on most of the originating destinations for tourism has been huge, uh, certainly um, in, in Asia, certainly in uh, Europe, and definitely here in the Americas. But perhaps the more telling uh, blow has been to small, highly tourism-dependent regions, such as those of us in the Caribbean. And just by way of straight data, of the 20 most dependent small countries in the world on tourism, the Caribbean has 10, led by um, the British Virgin Islands with a 92.6 dependence. Um, and of course, this is followed by Antigua and Barbuda and Aruba, um, and a number of other countries, Barbados, the Bahamas, uh, St. Lucia, um, uh, Jamaica. And Jamaica uh, is, in fact, just one point ahead of Cayman. Uh, Cayman tops the top 10 of the most dependent regions. So how we get out of this and how quickly we get out of this is critical to the future development of the economies of these regions and um, arguably the world. Uh, several strong positions are being advanced, um, but the most important of all is the medical responses. And Jamaica has been, thanks to our Minister of uh, Health and Wellness, the Honorable Dr. Um, uh, Christopher Tufton, to uh, the leadership of our Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Andrew Holness, and the technical team of the Ministry, the, we have been pacing uh, in good line to minimize the impact on us if we as a nation and as a people continue to obey the guidelines given and follow the protocols that have been established. And we want in tourism this morning to re-emphasize the critical importance, especially during this period of sensitivity where community spread is likely to begin. For everybody, all the people, not just those who feel they have a symptom, but everybody in Jamaica to respond and to respond positively to the positions that government has taken and the direction that is being given for social distancing, for all the sanitation uh, responses that are indicated, for us to make sure that we lock down. To use a nice Jamaican phrase that we all love so much, Tanayad. And so this morning, tourism is saying to everybody, Tanayad because this is one of the surest ways of containing the spread of this virus and enabling an early return to economic activities so that you can continue to earn and to develop your own well-being. But the industry in the process has also done some positive things in terms of the workers of the industry. And I just wanted to indicate a few things on that very quickly. The first thing is that along with the Ministry of Finance, the stimulus package has been announced and is now in the process of being finalized for implementation. The Prime Minister and the Minister of Finance have given uh, April 9th as the date for commencement, and we are all working to achieve that. So I want all the workers of the industry to appreciate that. And the, the package is going to be very comprehensive in terms of how it impacts every single worker of the industry. If you are a contract worker, you will have the benefit. If you are a full-time worker, you will have the benefit. If you are a craft vendor, you will have a benefit. If you are a juta or what we call a transportation a, um, a player, partner, stakeholder, you will get the benefit. If you are a small hotel owner, 
who is impacted because of this. You will get a benefit. And so we have looked in a broad way to ensure this happens. The second thing that we're looking at is how do we build capacity? How do we train up workers now to scale up the capacity of our workers that when this thing is over, they are going to be in a better position to give a higher quality of service, to be able to lift the product to another level, and to make sure that Jamaica stays top of mind in the marketplace. So through the Jamaica Center for Tourism Innovation, we are going to, con to, to, to have an online training program and certification. The good news is that we have partnered with the American Hotel and Lodging Institute and the American Culinary Foundation to enable this to happen and all that will be provided for free. We're working also with the Heart NTA to ensure that there's a complete program. So when you are not working formally, you can still be training virtually. And that's very important. The next uh, response is that the hoteliers themselves now are responding. And they are providing support for workers. But beyond that, they are also responding to the national COVID-19 uh, program. And so far, over a million US dollars have been provided through different type of support arrangements. Sandals has led the way in terms of a number of initiatives that they have taken. The ISO um, Foundation has also come in, and a number of other um, chuckle um, has also come in from the attraction side. And there are a number of others, and they are improving, they are increasing the number of um, companies that are participating in this process. So it is a all of industry response to get this one behind us as quickly as possible. Inside also, we are completing the arrangements for the pension. You remember we talked about that. And um, on Tuesday, I tabled in the House the um, motion for the regulations um, to bring into effect the critical elements of how the implementation of the scheme is going to be effected. So the debate will take place the next time the House meets, and then it will be approved, and that will be behind us. Additionally, the Board of Trustees have completed their work and have appointed the um, fund manager, that is Sajikor, and they have also appointed the fund administrator, that's Guardian Life. So the exercise can now begin immediately as we turn around. And to close that little loop, we passed over the first tranche of the billion dollars commitment that the government of Jamaica has made to the fund by providing the first check of 250 million that has been passed over to the fund managers. So the pension scheme is on track. So for the workers of the industry, let me just recap. One, we're providing the stimulus package which will enable all of you to get a benefit during this difficult time. Secondly, we are saying don't stay idle at home. We want to train and to build your capacity to provide greater innovation in the industry when we return. And thirdly, we are continuing the program of your own social security so that once we get back on track, your pension program will be there. Now, we have gone a little further now. We're working with other um, partners in the, who are connected with tourism. And one of the biggest partners for us is agriculture. And so we have gone and we have developed an app called Alex, which is a platform to connect the small farmers and all the persons who are producing and providing services on the agricultural side for the industry. And we know at this time that um, the hotels are closed, but hopefully it's for a short time. However, the need for the app is even more appropriate at this time because you, the small farmers who have been producing for the industry, would have excesses and you would need to have an opportunity to connect with not just hotels now but to other entities so they know what you have where you have it what quantities you have it in and even price and so today i have here the um, minister of state in the ministry of um, industry agriculture and fisheries and we are going to be handing over to him a set of 
um, of tablets TEF has purchased for the purpose of enabling all the small farmers out there to have technological access to the platform of Alex. And so um, I want to, to do that. We, we have phones as well. Um, and this is, this is very important. Yes, so this is the phone. Um, and, and where's the laptops? The tablets and laptops and all those wonderful things that we're making sure. Ah, so the small farmer who now is producing his supplies that would normally go to the hotel can now connect with supermarkets. He can connect with um, um, other marketing sources so that he can move his produce from the field and get a return even during this difficult time of COVID. So, Minister, we're going to stand up and present. I'm supposed to keep the social distance, <laughs> so, so we're presenting. All right, so, Minister. Thank you. Okay, excellent. So that's for agriculture. Um, then, finally, I, I want to indicate that we feel very strongly that the industry must prepare itself for the recovery. Uh, first of all, as I indicated, we must be very strong on the question of compliance with the protocols as established by the Ministry of Health and go even beyond that. Err on the side of caution and carefulness. Do even more than the Ministry of Health is asking you to do to protect yourself and to keep yourself healthy and strong. But we are establishing now a task force, a recovery task force. And that recovery task force is going to be charged with looking at the industry as it unfolds now and to develop a blueprint for a post-COVID-19 tourism. And this is very important to us because we know that the world is going to change after COVID-19. We know that there are going to be new paradigms that will emerge. We know also that there are going to be new markets um, that are going to emerge. And we know also that some of the demographics that now drive the tourism experience are going to change. So what we have to, to do is, first of all, to look into the future a little bit, to see what's happening in terms of technology. Where is technology taking us? What is the new te te um, uh, innovative uh, drives that are going to influence new products, new experiences, and most importantly, who are going to be the new tourists that are going to come post-COVID-19? And I think that this is very important. Um, we also want to, to look at how the airlines and aviation is going to be configured in this new paradigm that we're speaking of. Um, we are talking with the market, and um, I must tell you that the market is not as pessimistic as some people think, and that there is some green shoots that are emerging. Um, and we are seeing, for example, that the appetite for travel has not died. Bookings, for example, for May and June are still very strong. People have not um, gone and said, okay, I'm going to cancel for those months. Yes, March, there's cancellation. Yes, April, there's some level. But the bookings are still out there for May and June um, and onward. People have bought vacation sometimes a year in advance, as you know. People are members of, um, of clubs. People have a, a rewards program that they are benefiting from. And all of these are impacting on the way that the appetite for the industry is still holding. Um, but everything, everything is dependent on how the world manages this COVID-19 virus. Just to be uh, strengthened by the fact that if we do what we have to do in Jamaica, we can flatten the curve and our recovery period can be short. Thank you, um, Minister Bartlett. Let me just say, one of the things that we have really 
tried to focus on over the last three years is the strength in the linkages between agriculture and tourism. I really want uh, strengthened by the fact that if we do what we have to do in Jamaica, we can flatten the curve and our recovery period can be short. Thank you, um, Minister Bartlett. Let me just say, one of the things that we have really tried to focus on over the last three years is the strength in the linkages between agriculture and tourism. And I really want Minister Bartlett for his leadership in, in that regard, especially in establishing the Linkages Council. We recognize that if tourism is really to have the sort of impact that we want it to have on our country, we have to strengthen those linkages. The good news is that we really have made tremendous ground in strengthening those linkages. And for those who doubted the gains that were being made, unfortunately, they have seen it now in a very real way, where with the downturn turn in the tourism sector, it has had a tremendous negative impact on our agricultural sector. Because the reality, a number of our farmers have been using the platforms that we have been providing to link with our hotels. And we have seen far greater take up. In fact, we have done some work in the field, Minister, and we have seen that for the month of March, due to the downturn in tourism, we have approximately 9,000 tons of produce across all sorts of lines, vegetables, um, fruits, that would normally go into the hotel sector that are now excess. And if you were to look on April, we're forecasted to have another 11,000 tons of produce. We're talking about billions of Jamaican dollars that would have been taken up by the hotel sector, the tourism sector, but now that have no place to go. But with every challenge comes an opportunity. And we want to thank the Ministry of Tourism for recognizing that even in this time of difficulty, we can innovate and we can strengthen the things that we do. One of the big pluses that has come out of our interaction is our online platform, where it was set up by the Ministry of Tourism in partnership with the Ministry of Agriculture and RADA, so that hoteliers um, would have a direct link to farmers. It provides direct access. And on the platform, we have a number of farmers who trade. And what used to happen is that the hotels would go on, and we have an office staff that would man taking those requests that come via the online platform. Clearly, one of the challenges we now face is that we want people to work from home. But we have to equip their homes so that they can conduct the work of the online platform from wherever they are. So, Minister, this donation of the six um, tablets, well, laptops, and six smartphones will ensure that this office team that we have, they can access it from wherever. And when the orders come in, they can now channel those orders on to other people. What I want to say to people, what we have recognized now is that the Alex, as we call it, is critical because people are unable to leave their homes to go to the regular markets and supermarkets. So what we have said to the team and what we've seen, Minister, is that we now have more orders of just individuals who are logging on to the platform, seeing that we have cucumber, that we have cantaloupe, melon, and making their orders. And what we find is that a lot of the farmers on the platforms will deliver themselves. So the Alex platform now is now providing us an outlet for access to this excess produce. So I say to those who are listening, if you're wondering how can you get some of this excess produce that we have, go on agrilinkages.gov.jm. It used to be for big orders, but the platform is so configured that you can order even two pound of tomato. What we find, the farmers who are willing to deliver, a lot of them are, are taking those orders. And now that the team can work from home, we can call the farmers, we can get them to deliver right to your gate. So I say, if you want to help us through this time and to help our farmers, go on agrilinkages.gov.jm. You can send us an email, you can make your orders, we will deal with it. The last thing, Minister, I think now as we continue along the road to strengthen, we have an office in Kingston that's doing a lot of good work. Um, it would be nice now to expand our reach throughout 
the various parishes. I think we should have an office in the western parts, you know, places where we're very familiar, St. James, St. Elizabeth. And again, if we can provide these form of laptops and smartphones, then we can have Alex um, connectors all over Jamaica. Absolutely. And that will help us. And we can merge it with our marketing officers, give them the technology, have everybody on the Alex platform, and we can, coming out of this, now have this platform where we connect our farmers with the buyers directly through tourism. So thank you, Minister, and we look forward to continue working together. Excellent. Now just to wrap up that side of um, the discussions, uh, we have provided $1.5 million uh, for this initiative. Yes. And um, the focus now is going to be on restaurants and supermarkets and so on, so that the farmers out there can make these contacts. Uh, and just by way of information, you know, the work that the um, center has been doing yeah. has really shown good results uh, through what the linkage program have done it's from December 2018 yeah. um, to December 2019, you know, it's $282.5 million of business Absolutely. that has happened between the farmers and hotels and yeah. so on through the center. So we are excited about that prospects of even doing more. And, um, and, and even as we look at um, the last few months before COVID actually struck, you know, and we, we see that we were moving in the region of so nearly 300,000 dollars that had gone by way of business again through that um, center. So we see that this is a very important part of building out the linkages um, and using this period, and, and this is the point that we wanted to make, is that in tourism, we are not using this period to cry and moop and to bemoan our lot, our yeah. cursed lot, Absolutely. to use a very nice phrase, yeah. right? But we are using this period as looking at how can we come back better. Absolutely. How can we be of more service and value to the people of Jamaica and how this industry that has become so critical globally can continue to add value to destinations, particularly destinations that are hugely tourism dependent, such as us here in the Caribbean.